hope everybody's doing well. This is definitely a hot day in the H, but nonetheless, out moving around running errands and I am not solo today. I have my ace with me. Say hi, Samaj. Uh, so first of all, let me give you some warnings about Samaj. This is my youngest grandson. He is five. I know how old you are. Thank you, sir. But he, I wasn't going to tell him your age, but since he wants you to know he's five years old, but he is a professional photo bomber and video raider. He's been doing it since he could walk. So I can't promise you anything. This is going to be one of those light ones that I always tell you about. It's kind of like pulled on by a conversation that he and I was having. And yes, we have conversations. He asks a million questions. He definitely has a lot of my tendencies, which is interesting, but he has a lot of my tendencies as a kid, always asking questions, never satisfied with simple answers, wanting it explained in detail. And so here we are and we, we you know we're riding but we were talking before we even left he's with me all weekend long so this may not be the last time you see him and he may be a lot more involved in the next video because he will straight up crash with, uh without unapologetically crashing to just boom hey what's going on and jump right on in there like it's his video uh but anyway I'm looking at him and, you know, I've like, this has been my ace since he was two weeks old. Um, uh, his dad and his mom, this is our son's uh, son. Um, and his dad and his mom had to work. So two weeks in, he's at the house. Personally, I didn't think his mom needed to be going back to work that soon, but these kids are different. Okay, so he's at the house and the ladies in the, you know, upstairs trying to, you know, all the females upstairs doing their babysitting thing and he ain't having it. He giving them the business. Uh, he's wearing them out and screaming at the top of his lungs. And I'm downstairs. I'm trying to watch me some football. I think it's preseason or something like that. Yeah. If I'm not mistaken, preseason football. Just trying to do something, you know, with me. And he's going for it. I said, man, let me go up here. So I go up there and I say, give him to me. And I get him and I put him on my shoulder. And by the time I get downstairs, dude's asleep. And I kept him with him and we've been together ever since. Uh, he'll come find me, you know. He'll come find me if he doesn't feel safe, if he's feeling, especially when he gets sleepy or anything like that, he's gonna come find me. And if we're together, he's up under me. I mean, when I say up under me, up under me. Now we have our rough housing moments and our, you know, tough guy moments, but then it's still, he needs to be loved on and affection. And I get it and I give it all to him 100% full. Uh, but I'm looking at him and, and, it, and, it, and it takes me to this whole passion of mine about boys. And I say, well, okay, he's got this love about him. He's got this care uh, and, you know, this, this, this uniqueness. If I don't know, I don't care where my spirit is. When this kid shows up, it's automatically lifted. He has an authentic love and concern. And everybody has their own little dispositions. But what I know is most kids, his age, unless they've been disrupted by stress, by trauma, by a bunch of negative energy, negative experiences, being around a bunch of negative people, talking negative, treating each other poorly, then they're more than likely going to naturally be loving and accepting and uh, have a positive outlook. So the environment, as I have been teaching and um, talking about, you know, through my uh, segments on epigenetics, uh, multi-generational transmission of trauma and so many other things, it is immensely important that they have the right environment. Fortunately, he has a loving environment no matter where he goes. If he's with Marion, she's loving on him. If he's with me, I'm loving on him. If he's with his mom and dad, he's being loved on. He's with his aunties. He's being loved on as the youngest cousin. He's being loved on. So he's getting this and he's, but the, here, here's the thing. His name is Samaj Prince. Um, and, it, you know, he 
knows what that means. Samaj is his dad's name spelled backwards, but Prince is about royalty. It's about who he is. He's constantly reminded of how smart he is. He's constantly reminded about the things he can do. He's very smart. The programs that he's allowed to access on his game and on, on, on uh, the phone are phones that are engaging him in skills and things of that nature. He's allowed to play and do everything else any other kid has done, but the negative stuff, the negative, I mean, I could be doing whatever I'm doing and I can hear in my subconscious what's going on at the phone. And what I found out is you gotta be real careful on YouTube. They'll have something and it looks like a cartoon and they play around like cartoons, but the conversations they are having are far too uh, advanced for, and I'm talking life situationally, it, life situational advan advanced uh, from everything from, from sex to, you know, other life things that, that kids that age don't need to be hearing. And so, you know, I get like, what's, what's that? Well, we gonna block this. But what I look at is he literally looks to me for the guidance. He looks for me, not just as a provider when he wants something to eat, when he wants something to drink. You're definitely gonna hear about that. But also, well, how do I do this, Papa? What do I do here, Papa? You know, and, 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 and you, you have to be willing and be there to answer. So when I think about that, you know, I'm just thinking about there are a lot of kids out there that don't have that. That's why I, you know, am so adamant about supporting the Black Man Lead Rite of Passage Initiative. We've got to be modeling manhood to these young kids. We've got to be giving them something to uh, anchor, solidify, and ratify Black manhood and masculinity in their minds, setting a standard of expectation as how they're going to behave as they age, as they mature, as they walk into the responsibility of their manhood. Uh, it starts this early. It starts this early. And I've started with him long before this. We've always engaged each other. Every engagement that I have with him is with an understanding of my responsibility to influence how he sees this world and how he sees himself in it and what he can do in it. It's always, wait a minute, let me think about it. How am I handling this? Am I being patient enough? Am I being focused enough? Am I being stern enough? All of these different things requires a lot of attention, a lot of engagement. And let's be honest, that's not happening in a whole lot of homes. And we're expecting for these young kids to grow up and be pro-social. We're expect, expecting them to grow up and be able to do the things that are going to advance not only their agenda and their interest, but the interest of our people. That's wishful thinking at best. We're going to have to be actively engaged. We're going to have to love on these kids, whether they are ours or not. We really need to start looking at that. So I was just sitting up and spending some time with him, and I'm saying, man, I ain't doing no rhyme with Rick with this kid in this car because he's going uh, he's going to bum rush the video. And I'm surprised he hasn't because I did one on a program earlier, and he was talking about chicken. Um, but he is a great kid and he's a kid though you know you gotta look at him going like dude what you doing really and he'll look at you but the thing is he is so i mean you can just look at him and tell if i protect him he's gonna be special but i can also know if i don't cover him and i don't demand that his father covers him that it could turn out an entirely different way and so it also means I have to still cover his father. The father's 30 years old. Still, I have to co cover his father. I have to still be accessible to his father. I still have to be, and that's the links that we're not seeing. We're not seeing the links. We're not seeing, we're not seeing the links uh, the connections there's this disconnect with us in how we're managing and handling and loving and modeling uh, manhood and womanhood, if we're going to be honest. Um, but 
if we're talking about creating a right environment, it begins with the safety that the men are capable of creating. If we can't create a safe environment, we can't expect our women to flourish. We can't expect our women to really truly function and flourish in that femininity. We can't leave them exposed. We definitely can't be the ones harming them and then expecting them to have this level of femininity and softness that everybody's always talking about. That's just simply not going to happen. If we're not doing our jobs, they're going to have to become harder in order to be safe, in order to defend themselves, in order to move and operate in this world. And that comes at a price. And the kids pay a part of that price. We have a responsibility to do better than what we're doing. And so I am absolutely challenging everyone to do better. So I'm calling you out. Um, love on the kids in your home, obviously. Love on your grandkids. Love on your kids. Love on your nieces and your nephews. Uh, but also... We need to be aware of so many kids out there that don't have anywhere close to some of the love that we've been given and we give. And so my challenge is that we start doing something. I really want you guys to get behind the programs that we have, especially Black Man Lead, but not only Black Man Lead, but especially Black Man Lead. Because if we can properly socialize young Black males, we reduce the violence, we reduce the disconnect between men, Black men and Black women. We increase the ability to build families, which is so important. And so, again, I am challenging you. If you in any way believe in what I'm doing, support the work we're doing and make it make an effort. Go out and see how you can touch the lives. But I want to literally take the Black Man Lead Rite of Passage Initiative. Uh across this country. I want to teach it in cities, set up people who want to run the program, uh, set up chapters, uh, make it a universal networked, uh, universal definition of manhood that we're creating young men who are operating at the highest possible level based off the same standard. Um, on that note, look, I'm about to get ready to get out of here. I just want to drop in on you for that. Again, thank you. And uh, tell them bye, Samaj. Say bye. Bye. All right. You guys take care.